welcome back. We're on building a RANS S21. Uh, first, I'd like to give a shout out to Beth White, who started uh, Habitat for Aviation, I think in Vermont. Uh, and she's purchased a large warehouse and she's introducing young women into aviation maintenance and building. And just recently purchased a RANS S21 and has an all women's team uh, building a fine aircraft. So shout out to her. Uh, check out her website, Habitat for Aviation. It tells a good story uh, about someone helping the aviation community. Uh, in this episode, I prepare the engine for mounting. Uh, I start with some of the electronic ignition components and then move on to the baffling and run into an interesting hiccup uh, with the engine design that I have to research and fix, but I'll cover that in the video. And I think I start by uh, putting the uh, coils on the top of the engine. So with that, let's jump into it. Okay, uh, we're going to get on to mounting the engine. And there's a lot of prep work that needs to get done for that. Uh, the first thing, I, I just turn my manuals to the first part of the engine. There's some checklists of things that need to get done. And it looks like the next thing I have to do is this uh, ignition coil mount. And I've gone to my uh, parts page. The very first page is in the um, manual. And this is this mount that goes on top of the, the engine. And then I've got a firewall stuff. This uh, uh, oil cooler mount angle is kind of hanging on mine. I don't really have it attached because I know that's got to do with mounts. So that's kind of the next thing I do before I attach the engine is trying to get these mounts, the firewall finished, and um, get this oil cooler mount on top of the motor. As I look at the, the motor over here, that's the way it came from the delivery. I know I've got a box of stuff inside to go through. Uh, I've got my inspector on there making sure that I'm doing everything correct. And so in combination with these manual pages, I'm going to open this box and start taking stuff out and figure out what I've got in here. When you unpack the motor, this is what you get. And then they also send you, they come around the crate, about four boxes of miscellaneous parts. A script here, more parts in there. Engine log book, looks like an alternator, and just more parts. In one of the boxes are your um, light speed ignitions and your ignition coils which are all pretty early in the process. I think these get mounted even before you do the engine work. Uh, it comes with the inventory list for the system and then also an operations manual, which looks like it's maybe 30 pages. I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to sit down and read this whole manual. Um, last engine I put in a car was back in college, so uh, it's been a while since I've worked with engines. It would be probably good for me to get a feel of what this is all about. Uh, the text is page 11-2 in the engine section. It talks about um, cutting the bushings for the coil mount plate, which is this. And the coil mount plate has some quarter-inch nut plates on it. It doesn't say anything about putting the nut plates on, but once again, I think you have to do it just following the diagram. Because then it goes on to say cut the bushings and mount it. But you can't mount it if you haven't put the nut plates on. So... Uh, this is my plate. I'm going to go ahead and use the 332nd rivets and the quarter inch nut plates and get those mounted on. And I'm probably going to use some high heat paint to paint this uh, uh, just to protect it a little bit more and give it a little better look. Okay, the uh, next step in the manual is to put on this ignition coil mount plate, which is this guy here. I've got the uh, nut plates that I've just attached to it. And then you've got these cushion clamps that go on to the number three, number four cylinder push rod. I guess that's what those are. And then they have you cut up some bushing material uh, to 13 sixteenths or 0.8125. And they're gonna go between the cushion clamp and the mount plate with a AN3 bolt. So we'll get that put on loosely. And then it looks like it looks like this uh, fuel line is going to have to get moved a little bit. It's kind of it's right in the way, so we'll have to figure out how to move that. I think probably a little bending and a little relocating would work, but we'll, we'll see. As I suspected, 
these gas lines are going to, or this gas line is going to have to get bent just a little bit. So I'm just going to loosen up these nuts and bolts and carefully bend the line away from this uh, mounting bracket. I'm uh, spray painting that coil bracket uh, with some automotive high heat 2000 degree spray paint. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put these ignition boxes onto the firewall. They mount on the inside. And it looks like they go, one of the bottom corner of each goes into the welded tab of the frame. And there's actually two different size bolts um, that you have to use, AN bolts. Uh, one that goes to the frame and then the others. So you got to be careful of that. And then there are some bushings in here that separate the box a little bit from the wall. So you got to cut some bushings. And then it looks like they just screw through. So it looks like a pretty straightforward installation. Okay. Uh, there are my eight half inch bushings probably have to bore them out just a little bit but they're all set to go for the spacing for the uh, ignitions to be away from the firewall so this is one of those odd questions that I'm just gonna follow the directions blindly even though I can't figure it out these bolts and the top of the these are the two lower ones these are the two upper ones the eight is a longer bolt than the nine uh, the 8 is a 10A, and the 9 is a 7A. And I would assume the different bolt would have been the one that goes through the cage frame tab, because the other three just go through the firewall. My ignition boxes are on. It was pretty straightforward. You just got to get your bushings in here, and there's some uh, large washers going one side and small washers on there. So just keep your hardware straight. Um, I did look at another video to see that the um, coax hookings are in the center and the cable hookings are on the outside. I've got my ignition coil mount plate on here. There's two bolts on one side, one on the other. Um, I did prime it or paint it as I mentioned with a high temperature paint. I had to move this gas line. It was conflicting right here. I reversed this clamp and then very carefully holding this end kind of pulled it around and moved it away and I'm, I've got clearance on both sides so I'm, I think I'm good with that. There's a figure in the uh, figures manual uh, showing the direction of each of the coils on top of the, the bracket. I've uh, got my coils mounted on top of that coil bracket. That was pretty simple. These are just some one quarter inch bolts some thick washers and then some bushings in between it and they go into those uh, quarter rib nuts that you put on they go on pretty straight there's a diagram telling you which way they face and what the uh, position is but that's all pretty simple you know I decided to add some uh, tabs here to clip my charging cables on when you open that battery flap that I've got it doesn't give you a lot of access to get clamps in there if you need to so this just gives me the ability to hook on a charger onto these clamps. Pretty simple. I cut this one down pretty low because I didn't want any possibility of, of grounding it to something from the floor. Uh, but it just gives me just enough to get a clamp on there and charge. I've got this uh, aft ignition brace with a diagram here. And the text says to fabricate the brace and rivet to the mount plate. Well, it doesn't really show you where to rivet it and where to put this hole and which direction, which orientation this is. So what I figured out from watching some videos is this attaches to the baffling. And as you set the baffling up, you'll be able to, to attach this as well. So that's what I'm going to work on the aft baffling now. Okay, uh, the manual has you uh, mount the engine first and then put the baffling on. Um, in all the builder videos that I've seen, they have put the baffling on first and then mounted the engine. And that's a heck of a lot easier walking around the different sides of the engine to work on it. So I'm going to follow the other builder videos in that process. Uh, if it doesn't work, uh, check one of my future videos. I'll let you know. As you pull your parts out for the baffling for the left side and for the right side, a lot of these parts that you check off and they show one 
is the same part that you'll find over here and there's only one so you have to, as you're checking them off you start looking for these parts and you can't find them and you realize you've already checked them off over here so just be careful as you're getting all your parts out uh, as um, I spent a lot of time looking for parts that were actually already checked off over here I've just attached the first two pieces of baffling and they just kind of go into place if you follow the diagram and in the engine there are some quarter inch open areas that these screws just go into and they say leave them loose and don't rivet anything but I'm just kind of seeing that things are just going to fit into place and then we screw and rivet later but that's kind of how things start to go on um, okay the next thing it says to bolt on support angles to the forward sides of both both sides of the engine and as we come over you can see I've got the baffling on the right and left sides and then the support angle I believe is this one which is goes into one bolt over here and it gets supported over here by riveting or something else and the other one appears to be this one going this way uh, although it looks uh, funny over there I'm not a hundred the the diagram I zoomed up on it and that appears to be the right hole but if it's not I'll edit it further down the line I can't find any other hole at the bottom of the cylinder that would fit that screw so but it does look like it's gonna leave a funny set of bolts for this but we'll see we'll see what goes on the uh, the mount on this side against these four holes I came over to the other side this would be the left side I'm running into the same kind of weird situation where this bracket fits the screw hole down here but it comes right across whatever is supposed to be here and this bracket is not lined and level with this one so there's something going on with this attachment and it's not the same as uh, engines I've seen on other YouTube builders so it looks like this might be the attachment for my constant speed prop uh, this motor was configured to be either a constant speed or fixed pitch uh, maybe this is where the gearbox goes I'm not enough uh, an expert on engines to know why uh, but that's that's I know enough that that's not right so doing some research to figure out what's going on okay so this is the deal on those uh, mounting bolts uh, that were here and that's those brackets clearly don't work uh, what happens is when you order a constant speed uh, prop engine option they also include mounting brackets for an air conditioner compressor and I guess they have it on both sides so you can choose which side to put it on and Titan Auto apparently Titan automatically puts it on when you order a constant speed I guess only people with uh, constant speed props want air conditioning um, don't know the reason but now <coughs> I'm going to have to fabricate some of these pieces to fit around here because uh, the baffling that I've got won't fit around these nuts. So I'm going to have, I talked to Rance and they said just fabricate the right brackets to fit the height and then uh, fit the baffling around there, cut the baff, trim the baffling. So that's what I got to do. If anyone else ordered a constant speed prop, something to run into. There's not many of us out there. Uh, I think I've heard there's only like four or five that, that have gone constant speed. I've uh, I've trimmed these inlet floors so they'll clear around this mounting hole problem that I had and trimmed it up and it goes flush up in here and that's the left side <clears throat> had to do the same thing for the right side this whole piece had to get cut out of this uh, inlet floor and then the rest of it fit up here and I've clay coated in the next thing I think is to hang down some baffling that hangs down, but I'll, I'll check the instructions. The next step is to take these barrel and cylinder plates and uh, transfer drill them underneath this uh, floor, this baffling floor. And it says to keep them tight to make sure they're tight against the barrel and cylinders. So I guess there's no issue with them touching the cylinders. They're worried about chafing or something, but it, it says to have them tight against the barrel and cylinders. So these will get transferred drilled to a 30 and, and then eventually riveted underneath this floor plate. There are nine holes already pre-drilled into that support bar. So I'm just transfer drilling them out to the 30. So that'll predetermine where these um, plates get laid out. I'm going to show you what I did. Uh, the first hole in this brace 
if I move this uh, baffling fin over to that first hole, it starts out here. And in other videos, it looks like all these bafflings cover these cylinder fins. So if I skip the first hole and move it in, and this long one looks like it clearly is supposed to wrap around this part of the cylinder. By moving that in and putting the second one so it's tight against the first one, uh, it then is on the edge of these cylinder fins wrapping around. So I'm going to skip that first hole and then the rest of these baffling pieces fit nice and tight all the way across, which is what I've seen in other videos. But the diagram doesn't show this hole uh, being used as just a second securing hole. It actually shows the fin going into that first hole. But then that doesn't line things up with these cylinder fins and it leaves gaps. And I don't think we're supposed to have gaps. So that's, uh, that's what I'm going to do. So this part uh, 26, 21 left, uh, number, part number 18, has got a pilot hole, a number 40. If I had started with this one first and used that pilot hole to set the spacing and then kept them tight all the way along, I would have had a nice tight fit. Uh, I did not. I started at this end and worked this way and then realized that pilot hole is for this hole here. So I've got a small gap between these two underneath here. Uh, let me see if I can show you what I'm talking about. Ah. So if I, line, if I line this one up with the pilot hole, you can see I've got a small gap between them uh, right here. And in other videos I've seen where they're lined up nice and tight. Um, so I will use that. I've, I've got an option to use that pilot hole or to move the whole thing over tight and redrill it in a new hole. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but for future builders, start on the left or start on the inside and work out and you'll get a much tighter fit is my guess. The uh, right side goes on the same way. You put these four cylinder barrels uh, up tight on this floor, click them in. The only difference is you add a cabin heat uh, inlet on this side, and then you take them off and rivet them. Well, that's a, a good place to stop this one. Uh, that section of build took me 21.3 hours. That brings my build to date at 1,072.7 hours. Um, and that does not include the research time that I took to research some of those engine issues that you saw. And if you thought that engine design issue was interesting, uh, I run into another issue, uh, again related to my option to put a constant speed prop on the engine. Uh, and I have to deal with that in the next video. I'll try and get that content out shortly. Um, uh, but it, it is interesting and, and it does require some uh, fabrication. So with that, thanks a lot for watching, and remember, dream it and just build it.